Good morning, everyone, and thanks for taking some time out of your, no doubt, busy, busy days, or if you're watching this later on on demand, welcome nonetheless. So uh, my name is Tony Harmer, and uh, you may have seen me in a few different places, LinkedIn, uh, lynda.com, and of course, my time at Adobe. Just before we roll, and while I'm actually just talking about what we're going to do today, uh, I've got a small poll that we're just going to pop up on screen for you now. I'd just be interested to find out what your current job role is. So if I just bring that up onto the main screen here. So it's always difficult these days to determine if people uh, define themselves as a designer or if they want to go to a specialism, if they want to be like a UX or call themselves UX designer or UXD or uh, a user experience designer or experience designer or just a plain graphic designer or so on. So you can see their production artwork or you might call yourself a layout artist uh and so on so those things let me just uh just pop uh, my face on screen as well for you just for a moment as well just so you can see me morning how oh, there you go see lovely uh super and i'll stop that in just a second uh so you can carry on uh with the poll so if you want to um play along with that then do so it's not compulsory it's entirely uh up to you if you want to and i'm not too worried uh if uh, we don't get any responses on there at all, actually, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, there's a few different ways you can connect with me. So uh, on Behance, Harmer, I don't get to add too much to Behance, but it's worth going to. On Twitter and Instagram, at Tony Harmer. On YouTube, uh, my channel, The Design Ninja. And there is a Facebook page and group. Uh, and you can start your journey to that at facebook.com slash The Design Ninja. So here today uh, to run through a few workflow and productivity tips uh, for Illustrator and possibly for InDesign and for Photoshop and XT. And we'll see how we go on uh, for time. Some of the things you might be aware of already, some hopefully will come as surprises. So the first thing that may be a surprise is the thing you're seeing on screen right now is actually uh, from illustrator so it's illustrator running itself and if i hit the escape key here you'll see that i'm actually using the presentation mode of illustrator to share this content with you which is very very handy brand new mode uh, added down here uh, in the view modes of the toolbar and this illustration here started out in illustrator draw and then came across into um, illustrator and if i just show you the vectors for a moment so if i just swap out to the vectors you can see that one's quite busy illustrator draw is a fantastic companion to illustrator that you can use on a tablet and on your phone to get work started and this one uh, actually began and ended on uh, the ipad and then just came in for optimization into illustrator because otherwise 100 uh, percent drawn on the tablet okay so i can actually get rid of that now and we can get started with some productivity uh, focused stuff here. And I'm going to begin in Illustrator where I'm creating some icons. Okay, so this is how I work. And this is one of the ways uh, that I can show you can accelerate what you're doing. So I have a master artboard at the top here that has an icon layout grid on it. And if I just zoom into that for your viewing comfort, and actually, I'm just going to start um, mouse pose here because this will help me um, to actually uh, highlight parts of the screen if that becomes necessary. So for example, if I need to track around to different places, then I can do that as well. So I'll just get that away for the moment. So this artboard got a layout grid on it so I can establish fine proportion with it and an icon just here. If I zoom out to all three artboards that I have here, OK, so if I come out to that, this is how I work when I'm generating icons like this. Rather than having this grid on every single artboard, I kind of work on one drawing artboard and then I switch to the artboard tool. The shortcut for that is Shift O, like so. And you can see this artboard is called Drawing Grid. You might be able to see that there or up at the top in the options bar just here as well or over in the properties panel 
So if I get rid of that for a second, and what I do is I make sure that move or copy with artboard is turned on. I then hold down the Alt or Option key to create a copy, drag that new artboard down to wherever I want the icons to be. So this one I'll then rename like so. And if we call this one temp for temperature, just there. Okay, that's named. I then switch back to my selection tool. I grab hold of the artwork on the drawing grid. Okay, and then remove it. I'm just going to keep the hexagon there because I'm going to use that uh, for the next one. And if I pick up a color here from uh, my document swatches, so if I come along and bring those up, in fact, if I get that panel open for you here, because this is a different layout to my normal production layout to make it easier for you to see. OK, and I've got a group of swatches just here and I'll just choose uh, this purple one. Actually, no, I'll go for green, I think, just here. And this color group was actually arrived at by creating one base color. Just temporarily, if I go and copy this and create a new document just for the moment and paste that artwork in and then we'll zoom in on that like so. OK, so I create one base color. So here's me doing that. So I'll maybe choose something. I want this to be yellowish like so. Bring a bit of red into it and drop some of the blue out of that. I start out with a color like this. I then go to the color guide panel. And this is one of those that gets overlooked so frequently in Illustrator. But it's very, very useful because if I click this chip here, OK, and I'll just highlight that for you. So this chip just here, what it does is it allows me to then populate using various color harmonies in this area here. OK, so I'll just turn the highlighter off for a second. And maybe I want to come down here to something. I want some oranges in there, definitely. Now, a pentagram splits colors five ways on the color wheel. So maybe I want to use that as the basis. I kind of like the compound as well, but they're all different starting points, which is important to uh, remember. In fact, I will go for the pentagram. I'm not mad for the red, but I might use a derivative color here, such as one of these oranges. And when I'm using this, I tend to change it to display 10 colors either side of the central harmony. And you do that, by going up to the panel menu and then coming down here to color guide options. And from there, you can specify how many steps you want and how much variation. Although, if, if I'm really honest, I've never changed that variation to anything other than 100% like maximum variation with that amount of, of different grades in there. And so once you find colors that you'd like to use, so maybe I want to use something lighter than the first one. Now, that is coloring the artwork there. So if I just deselect that for a second, OK, pick up this one here. I'm then going to hold down the command key. That would be control, of course, on Windows and start to click some of the other colors that I'm going to want to use here. OK, and get something like that arrangement for me. Of course, you might want some darker tones as well and so on. But I just want the five base colors for the moment. OK, and then I'm going to click to add that as a color group to the swatches panel. And if I go to the swatches panel, you can now see just down here that my color group has been added in this document. I do want to make a slight modification of that red. It's not exactly where I want it to be. I want it to be a bit more orangey like so, which is fine. You can do that. You can modify as you want to but of course you've got a leg up uh, so to speak on getting that sorted out just there okay i'll remove that piece of artwork from there just for the moment and go back to the icons here okay so what i might do then once i've got this here i want to draw a compass so let's draw in or compass needles at any rate i'm going to draw that artwork in here so i'm going to come along and then uh, just get my ellipse tool by tapping L on my keyboard. I'm going to come to the center here when it says intersect my smart guides. 
are on, which you toggle by using Command U or Control U. And I'm going to draw from the center outwards. So I'm holding down the uh, Alt key on my Mac, uh, Option key rather on my Mac, that would be Alt on Windows, and Shift combined to get a regular shape. From the center outwards, I'm going to around about just under halfway of the size that I've currently got there. And this one's going to have a solid fill. Okay, and I'm going to choose that from my swatches. I'll choose the orange here just for the moment, or maybe actually the red uh, would work quite well there. I'll go for a slightly deeper uh, red. And then I'm going to need to draw my needles. So what I'll do with that is, I'll start out with the rectangle tool. So I'll deselect everything here, and I've got my rectangle tool selected. And then I'm going to draw a square from the center outwards, like so. Now, once I've got that square, which I'm going to modify the color to, to a very, very light gray, okay, I'm going to hover over one of the corners, rotate that around, and then hold down shift to lock it to a 45 degree increment. I'm then going to tap A on my keyboard to get the direct selection tool. And I'm going to click on the two side points here. So this one over here on the left, hold down shift and get the point on the right. I'll then tap S to get the scale tool and I'll hit return because that gives me the scale dialog just here. If I turn on preview, I can then roll down the scale here. So I'm just dragging on my trackpad across here to roll this down like so. So I'm just scaling those two points just there. Quite happy with that. So I'll hit OK and that's done. I'm just going to move that backwards one in the stacking order just here. OK, so I've got those two things together like so. Now, I might want to separate those out, but just for speed and whatever at the moment, I'll leave those two as they are. So here's your next time saving tip, right? OK, so what you want to do sometimes when you're creating bits of artwork like this, in fact, if I just copy this artwork, and go back to my blank document just here. Creating symbols makes tons and tons of sense. But what people quite often miss is that they have the ability to create dynamic symbols. Now, let me show you what that means. I'm going to create two separate instances here of this artwork. And to separate them, I'm just going to choose a different color, okay, for each one. So if I select the topmost artwork here, the green, okay, and I come along to my symbols panel, first of all, I'll actually clear out everything in there that I don't need, okay, and then I'll create a new symbol. And I'll call this one uh, static, like so, okay, and I'll change that to a static symbol just here, okay and hit OK. So that's added like so. Now, if I needed variations in that using static symbols, I'd have to create new symbols. And that's where dynamic symbols come in really, really useful. OK, so if I get the second piece of artwork and turn this into a symbol, OK, and I'll call this one dynamic just here like so. OK, you can ignore a lot of these things like movie clip because they relate to export for um animate uh, really here which we're not doing so if i just hit okay now this is a dynamic symbol so where's the advantage well here we go if i get my direct selection tool okay so i've tapped a on the keyboard to get my direct selection tool and if i come along and click on the symbol here the top the static symbol you can see that all it does is select the static symbol. Okay. If I come down to the next piece of artwork, the dynamic symbol, and click on one of the objects inside that, so hopefully you can see that I've actually got, and in fact, if I zoom in for you, you can see that I've actually got the red ellipse there, okay, targeted. Then I can change things about that. So maybe I want to change the color there, like so. If I go to the needle just here, maybe I want to 
do something with that as well so i might want to change the fill color i might want to affect other things with it let me just set i accidentally rolled that around uh, i might want to change a number of things with it including swapping it out for another symbol and that's really really useful okay to be able to do that in fact i did a grid of uh, american airports for a recent infographic and all i had to do was bunch all of the flags for the sorry international airports so i was doing it in america but international airports was bunch all of the flags into one symbol and then just lay those all out really really quickly and then just click on the individual ones and say change this to a us flag change this to a british flag change this to a french flag and so on really really easy so use dynamic symbols that's an awesome tip to have let me close up this document here and go back to this set here so if you once you've drawn things like this are making your way up to the file menu and coming down to export and choosing save for web then you're doing it wrong <laughs> without putting too fine a point on it or you're not doing it wrong but you're not making the most of your time because when you export here okay and i'm just going to save this to clip to artboard here first of all i have to engage an additional control to do that but i'd have to output that so choose the type it's going to be output to using either a preset or the controls here and then if i was doing renditions for different screen densities i'd be coming along and changing this percentage value just down here right so plenty of controls i'd have to mess with and i'd have to do that each and every time and possibly change the file name when i save it so we'll cancel out of that for the moment there is a better way and that's to bring up the asset export panel okay so here is that panel i normally in my working um space normally have that docked over on the side just here because it's so valuable now watch what happens when i drag in this artwork okay so if i just drag it in without holding any modifier and it does warn me actually here in the screen but if i just drag it in like so you might be surprised to see that it actually splits that apart into the component parts of the artwork and there are occasions when you actually might want that to happen. Think about if you were drawing some sort of nav bar or something for an app, you actually might want that to happen. You might want the whole bar itself and then you might want the individual icons. Let me just undo that from there. If I hold down the Alt or Option key and that direction is available, okay, just here it does tell you uh, how to use that. So I'm gonna drag that in like so, okay, and then just rename it, okay, so I'll call this one, um, compass just there even though it doesn't look like my usual compass icon and i'll grab this one just here and drag this in okay whoops i forgot to hold down the uh, alter option key there so i'll bring that in like so okay and i'll call this one temp there like so you'll see that if i select these items just click on them and you can shift click or command or control click if you want a non-contiguous range but if i select those I can determine how they're going to be exported. I've even got some presets just down underneath in that area here for iOS and Android. So if, for example, I clicked on iOS, this is what it's going to do. It's going to populate this area with all of these different things. Let me just turn the highlighter off for a second. So you can see I get one version, okay, at one up, one version at two up, one version at three up, and I get an SVG as well, which of course doesn't need a scale factor because that's what the V stands for, um, the, the vector part there, and the S for scalable. Okay, And I can add an other types as well. So if I want to change, if I just add one more scale here, okay, on the top there, so, sorry, down at the bottom here, and maybe I'll say I want this to be a PDF because that's very popular, especially if you're creating stuff for, iOS, so I want a PDF as well as an SVG. And when I export those things, let me just drop those out onto the desktop here and I'll create a new uh, folder for them, like so, export demo, just there, okay. When I export those, and if I just pop out to the finder, 
here and show you the result. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new finder window here, go to the desktop and go into that export demo. You can see it's all been separated out, okay, into individual renderings there, which is very, very handy. Your devs will love you uh, for doing this sort of thing, getting everything nice and settled out. So you can see I've got one there at one up, okay, for both of those things and two up for both of those things. Much, much faster. Not only that, okay, but if the artwork changes, okay, so let's just say I decided that green was a poor choice for that background or that particular green probably was a poor choice and change it. Can you see how it changes in the asset export panel at the top there? Just like so, bang, there you are done. That is way, way, way faster, okay, than um, it is to keep going backwards and forwards from there okay so moving on then to uh, photoshop uh, for the next one because that's the most common uh, next most common thing people are using for design and ux work those kind of things what i want to show you here is i want to show you this uh this email template here now i've got a couple of different things i've also got something from adobe stock which i could use but i think for time i'll stick with this email template now, when I'm working in two screens, as I am actually at the moment, so I've got the webinar coming across on one screen here, okay, and I've also got the screen that's being broadcast to you on this big screen, which you're going to see in just a moment. When I'm working on long form graphics, whether they're in Photoshop or Illustrator, what I tend to do is this, okay, I get a window, go to the window menu, okay, and I come down to arrange, all right, and I choose a new window for the document that I'm working on, okay? So I've got another window here like so. Can you see that? I then drag that onto the monitor I'm using here. Now in this booth, in the this audio booth, uh, this is the 2710 QC, which I absolutely love because I can just plug my Mac into it. I don't have to carry any other cables. There's just a USB-C cable poking out the side. I plug that in, it charges my Mac and all of the signal uh, for everything comes from the Mac directly up that line, which is fantastic. The only other thing I need to plug in are any other drives that I might be using, which I can also plug into the, the dock, which I'll show you in just a moment as well. But I just drag this up onto that monitor and then rotate it around. And I, I've got the 3200U out in on my main desk inside of the studio. And let me show you how that looks, right, when I do that kind of thing, because long form graphics particularly challenging to work on if I just stay in Photoshop for a moment, because if I zoom in so I can see the content, then of course I've got to do a lot of scrolling up and down to see how the whole thing is shaping up. So if I just come back out to here, let me show you the rig inside of, well, this is actually the old main studio, but because uh, we've moved into a new one since. But there's my Wacom uh, Cintiq that I'm working on, and you can see that I'm working in a detailed corner uh, just there on this graphic. In fact, the cursor's right here on that, so down here. So I'm working on that there in close up, but here I've got this monitor spun around with that new window in it. And all I do on the Mac is go to, uh, and you can do the same thing on Windows, you just target that particular display and tell it to display uh, with a rotation of 90 degrees and it works beautifully so i have kind of working on the areas here that i want to work on but all i need to do is glance to the left and i can see exactly how that long form graphic is working so let me just quickly uh, before i move into the the next tips in photoshop let me just very very quickly because i've got a camera in the back of the booth here which i'm just going to jump out to okay so it's going to show you the back of my head there we are. And here's the screen. This is the around working at the moment. But all I need to do here is literally pitch this up and spin it around like so. And of course, do the thing with the display. It makes it really easy uh, to do that. I love it. <laughs> OK, so I'll quit out of that so you don't have to look at me anymore. Try and keep your breakfast down. And uh, just while I'm here, let me just show you that docking station as well. So I'm not going to harbor, harp on about it at the moment. You just have a look at it yourself. But you can see it's got all of these ports and a headphone jack, just 
I love it. Absolutely love it. So do check that out uh, for yourself. And they've got a brand new one out, which we'll talk about hopefully in just a wee while, along with a super, super special offer as well, I'm sure. So let's go into Photoshop here and have a look at this. Now, this could be an email, could be a website, could be any number of things for a long form graphic. But I'm using the scenario of an email here. And you can see that I've got several colored layers, which is another great tip to focus on because when you get things that are hundreds of layers deep, and let's be honest, they can get hundreds of layers deep, you can filter your menus down, okay, in the layers panel. If you look at this drop down here, which everybody overlooks, so tr trust me, they do, you can filter by all of these different values. So, in my scheme here, graphics that can be modified that are smart objects inside of this particular thing, they're colored red. So what I'm going to do is not go to smart object because I might have other smart objects doing other things. I'll go to color just here, okay? And then I can choose the colors I'd like to see. And if I choose red, you can see that it's just temporarily hidden all of the other layers. If I go to orange, yeah, then you can see the ones there. They're buttons that are colored orange in my scheme. And it's a good idea to work out a display scheme for these things thinking forward. And when you want to turn that off, you just hit the toggle over here. So let's explore. If I just turn uh, the whole uh, thing off here, if I just change this back to kind, then it filters. And you've got some other things there, okay, controls that you can use as well. So if you want to filter for adjustment layers, do that. So with my uh, selection tool, uh, move tool here targeted, and I've got auto select uh, switched on, okay, at the top of the screen. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. But if I click on this thing here, this is the hero image, okay, for my email communication. And I'm going to come along and double click on the thumbnail, okay, for that, which takes me into that smart object, okay? So I'm going to drag in a couple of things which I think will be good for the hero image. So first of all, I've got this element here from Adobe Stock. And I'm just going to resize that outwards, which, by the way, now I can do with just one hand because I don't need to hold down any keys anymore uh, in the 2019 version to uh, change that. Now, this isn't licensed just yet, OK, because I want to kind of see if it's going to be good enough. Now, here comes another amazing tip. Maybe I don't want this figure in here. So how do I get rid of it? Now, you might think, well, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to move that person up onto it. And you might do that. I won't. It's a massive waste of time for me. What I'm going to do instead on this, which is a smart object, is I'm going to engage the camera raw filter, which is anybody who knows me knows I love this filter. Up here in the filter menu, come down to camera raw filter like so, which gives you all of the power of Adobe Camera Raw, but you can apply it to a layer or parts of a layer. Fantastic. And I'll come up here to the Smart Removal Tool, okay, Spot Removal Tool, and I'm just going to paint in, okay, around the figure just here. I can change the size of the brush if I want to make a smaller brush. Do that, come along, paint in like so. So I'm just going to paint around there, okay, just to get a selection. I'm not going to feather it too much. Now, automatically, it's just taking this across to that point. But what I'm going to do here is just come along and just position that like so. OK, so that's got quite a bit of feather on it. So oh, I've missed a gap. Out. I'm just wondering what's going on there. All right. OK, let me delete that one. What I did do is I didn't paint in uh, the middle. So if I just target this particular adjustment and delete it, let me do that again, this time with feeling. I thought, what is going on there? didn't paint in the middle get <laughs> I just used an outline there we are so now we'll get a much more successful result I can bring that across like so okay and line that up perfect I think and hit okay at least perfect for this comp okay and I could show that maybe to a client and say you know well there's the figure in there do you want the figure or not and then if they determine they don't want the figure I could perhaps go in and just double check that to make sure it was all exactly the way I wanted. And a huge benefit as well, of course, is that if I've got that and I've got an Adobe Stock subscription, I can just come along and license that asset 
and because the changes that have been made okay are uh, really entirely relating just to uh, the image so they're sat on top of the image as a smart filter then it will just bring me down the full res and just replace it like so you can see the watermark has just gone just there so i still want to give myself another option so i'm going to go to my creative cloud library here and bring down uh, another layer so i'll just bring this one in nice image there so let's just resize that out like so and get that into position perfect i think that's just fine and now i'm going to give myself some variability so here's how that works first of all i'm going to make sure i can see the layer comps window now these were introduced as far as i recall back in cs2 right so quite a long time ago right around about 2003 i think something like that maybe even actually earlier than that maybe 2002 so quite a while but there are huge numbers of people okay who don't know that they're there or how useful they are so i've just turned off the two layers that i've added and i'm going to create a new layer comp okay and i'm just going to call this um gray default just here like so okay and hit okay and there are different options i can choose i'm going to turn on the first layer okay and i'll create a layer comp for that and i'm pretty sure um those are scott's hills but i'll just call it hills just for now not the greatest name of course but you can see i can change the visibility the position and any layer style appearances so i've got hills just there and now i'll turn on the layer above okay and create a new layer comp for that right and i'll call that footpath okay they're like so good stuff once that's done through to that okay and i'll turn on the gray default as the current state good so i've got my layer comps there and i can move between those that will just turn on layers turn them on and off when i choose that layer comp like so very useful not half as useful as it is when i get it across into the other document so if i just close this out okay like so so i'm going to save that so that information now moves across into this file just here and here's the beautiful bit right so i would place this as a linked asset okay into a file that i was working on that's how i would do that and in fact all of the things you can see here that are gray these little boxes they're exactly the same thing so I can get that, come along to my properties, and you can see I've got a layers comp drop down here, and I'll choose hills, and that changes like so. And I'll choose footpath, and it changes like so. And in fact, if I work through some of these different linked assets here, right, so I could choose uh, the last document state for that. In fact, these ones I haven't completed, but the ones down at the bottom I have, and these are all various different products. So I've got a scout backpack there, Okay, a ranger backpack just here. These are just made up names, by the way. It's not the real name of the, of the product. But you can see how easy it is for me to change these things around. And basically, what I've got there is one Photoshop document that has all of those in as layer comps. Okay, and then I can just change them around like so. Really easy really really nice to do okay and what's even better about this is that photoshop has its own version of asset export which is awesome so you can export things in all your renditions like so if you want to not only that although i won't get time to show it today you've got the option to uh, actually join this connect it with dreamweaver so if you're using dreamweaver and then you simply use the extract panel in dreamweaver and drag these layers into your layout and it saves you a version of those so that's an awesome thing uh, to have while i'm here as well on this let me just show you one of the things people do i see them doing a lot is bringing in rulers like so to set up proportions so they go like this for horizontal rulers they go up to the top and drag down then they go across to the left and drag things in like so let me just do undo the addition of those two things there just so you know if you want to drag in from the nearest ruler you can and all you need to do to change the direction is hold down the alt or option key 
okay so it just changes like so so do that but i see people creating things where they're trying to create a columnar grid okay out of that and it's a waste of time because go out to the view menu come down to new guide layout okay and you can see instantly it draws me a guide layout now i want to bring in a margin on this one okay so and you can enter in you can enter in your own values here so on the left and right for example yeah now mine's set to centimeters at the moment but if i maybe change this to 20 and then type px on there for pixels okay and tab through yeah then it would change those things there as well let me just turn the preview back on it's because i tapped the letter p uh, <laughs> but you can see how it's brought that in like so p toggles the preview by the way just in case you didn't know that so that's a bonus tip just there you can use all of these different presets those 12 columns if you might uh, might want to use that there okay and even 24 columns that's like very very swiss grid uh, if you know what that is if not look it up learn something today cool so you can change all of that rows and columns like so but i'll cancel out of that so that's a useful thing uh for you to know okay so let's move across uh into uh xd for a few tips in xd and if we get uh, a bit of time uh, on the end here then we'll perhaps come back into photoshop because i've got other content that i can show you uh, as well in fact i might even show you the dream over thing if i get a chance let's just move across into uh, xd and i wonder if uh, how many of you have seen uh, xd already you might have looked at it a while ago and thought you know well yeah that's okay it changes every month so <laughs> it's well worth you coming along and taking a look at it trust me uh, i'm going to work through uh, a stock demo that i do OK, from here, this is my own stuff. There's no assets given to me. In fact, everything you're seeing here, there are no assets given to me uh, by anyone else. They're all my own thing. So this is a very simple uh, food app that I'm working on just here. OK, and I've got a load screen there, an onboarding screen. And from that, people will go to a login screen. Now, I've got a rectangle that I've drawn just here. And that rectangle is set to blur the background. So it's got this background blur property on here okay and then i can set various things such as the amount of blurriness like so so i can blur that more or less exactly the way i want it and then i've got the brightness so i can change that as well so determine how bright i may want that to be okay and in fact some opacity there as well so if i wanted to bring in the foreground color a bit because the object itself is actually filled with white then you can see how i can introduce that if i just change the color of that just for a moment so if I make it purple, or let's make it something very, very different here. Let's go for a, a blue. Yeah, okay, like so. And you can see how I can bring that in over the top of it as well if I wanted to. But there, I don't want to introduce any of that color. So I've got that. Then I've got a sign-in screen just here. The reason it's on a separate artboard will become uh, apparent as we go on. And then I've got this home screen and a series of tiles here which are just pretty much waiting on some icons okay to uh, complete them and so for that i've got a separate document where i've created probably the simplest sticker sheet in the world now these elements were drawn in illustrator and pasted in okay to this document it understands the illustrator clipboard you can also open Illustrator documents and PSDs uh, inside of here. It keeps all of their layers uh, intact uh, in there. The PSD thing is actually amazing, right? So got all of those things there and they're groups. How do you know they're a group, Tony? Well, because I made the group is the most obvious thing. <laughs> the second thing, right, is that they've got a green boundary. That's worth you knowing, right? That they have a green boundary if they are a group. And if there's an icon attached to the group, then they've got another property as well, which you will see. I'm going to open my uh, assets panel here, which is basically where I keep all of my symbols. And you can see each one of these things has been turned into a symbol. I'll just create another very, very basic symbol for you. So if I just said, right, this is the artwork I'm going to use. Here. In fact, let me make it slightly richer than that. All right, so I'll just get two things there, okay? 
and I'll turn them into a Boolean. So I've got this area just at the top of the screen here where I can create Booleans. Great thing is, just like Shapes Mode in Illustrator, these stay live for their entire uh, duration. So if I needed to get in there and do something, I'll just double click, move that around. There you go. Let's go with that. Okay. And then just come out and there you are. There's my Boolean. Okay. So I've got that going like so. And I'll add that by clicking the plus at the top here and then just rename it as required. I'll undo that. So we've got back to these things. So let me delete this. And these are all using a color that's been added at the top. So if I select them all, okay, and decide to change the color there, I can. And I'm going to copy those, go back into the Eat app here and paste those down like so and bring those in. So there we are, perfect. And let's just say that uh, I decided that that color was wrong. There's that little icon at the top, shows me it's a linked asset. Well, here's the benefit, especially if you're working across different groups. If I decide that color needs tweaking, what I can do is right click on it and choose edit. Okay, and then I'll edit that color. So let's just say somebody said to me, you know, they need to be slightly more towards magenta uh, and a very, very light tint of magenta, like so. I just save that document, go back to the other document, right? Then you'll see they've updated automatically. Let me just make that slightly more dramatic for you. So if I just edit this color, so it's just like a style. Whatever's using that definition, Okay, we'll change. Now I'm going to make those very, very blue. Okay, like so. Save it. Come across. Back to that. Okay, and there you go. They all change straight away because they're all linked assets just on there. Nice. Okay, so, whoops, a daisy. Just drag my tile across. And let me zoom out. I know I'm in the last couple of minutes here now, so I've got to, uh, got to just get a wriggle on. I'm just going to create a quick uh, repeat grid here, which you may or may not have seen. Okay, so I'll just create a grid there, change the spacing in the middle, add in a few more rows, okay, like so. And I can even move the repeat grid along if I want to just move those with the arrow keys, I can pop out to the finder just for a second. Okay, and I'll go into the XD folder here. I've got a whole bunch of fast food uh, things. So I'll just pick those up. Okay, not going to place them, just drag them in like so, boom, populated. Just here I have a text file and I'll drag that text file in and drop it over the name and you can see how all of those are populated. Come along here and then just extend the artboard to allow for scrolling and you can see the natural end is a line. I'm just going to very quickly switch across into the prototype mode here. Okay, and I'll go with this login screen here. So this one will be activated with a tap. So I'm just going to come along here and choose uh, for uh, a different action. So if I just get this, okay, this particular artboard, tap on here, and the trigger is going to be a tap, although I could make it time. So let's do time, actually. Let's have the delay at zero seconds. The action is going to be create me an overlay. The artboard I would like to be overlay is sign in like so, so it shows me where that's going to appear on here, okay, just like so. So if I click on it here, you can see it's going to end up just there. I'm gonna double click into this group, wire that up to this artboard, like so, and then at this point, I'll just test that out. So from this screen here, okay, what I'll need to do uh, is just get this to do something first. So I'll get it to transition, so time, zero seconds. Actually, let's make it three seconds just here. OK, we'll have a transition OK, across to the login artboard. Now we'll test that. There. So after three seconds, it transitions. There comes that. So the last thing I'll do is click on that and there you go and so on. And there's so much more uh, you can do with that as well, including as of the last 60 days, adding voice interactions to your prototype, which is fantastic. But for now, we're at the kind of wrap up point for the 10 minutes of questions. I know it's a lot of stuff to shoehorn in. Um, so if you get the chance to ask any questions, then there's a chat pod, okay, down, okay, inside of the um, GoToWebinar interface. 
just type away a question there i'll see if i can get through you might not have any questions if you don't that's just fine but if you do drop them in there and i'll do my best to answer them okay so let me just bring another thing out onto screen here okay i'm not seeing any questions at the moment if there aren't any i'm not too worried Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed uh, popping along for this session. Um, don't forget to watch your inbox for a special offer coming from BenQ uh, with the new kit that they've got uh, that's just been released, which is amazing. Now, I've got one question coming up now. So what I'm going to do is just bring up my uh, questions pod just here. So let me just pop that out onto uh, my screen. all right okay uh facebook uh so i've got someone asking about the best way to talk that and that's about a separate event so facebook is is the answer to that uh, where do i find my resources or good resources on productivity and efficient workflows in illustrator yes well uh, <laughs> at the risk of 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 uh, of self-promoting for a moment, but I'm going to shamelessly. Um, then uh, my courses on lynda.com and LinkedIn Learning. Uh, if you have access to lynda.com, then uh, check out my courses on there. I've got loads of things on productivity and workflow in there, especially things for people who are in-house in large enterprises or otherwise. So there's some of that stuff there. Um, if you've got LinkedIn, if you've got LinkedIn Premium, then you actually have access to all of the lynda.com content as well as LinkedIn learning content. Uh, so that's a real benefit. So there's stuff on there. And of course, there's other people who've got workflow things on there um, too. So plenty of bits there. Okay. Any more for any more? Groovy. OK, in that case, I will um, bid you adieu at this point, I think. Thanks ever so much for coming along. Don't forget the recording comes to you so you can see all of this stuff again. Uh, a lot shoehorned into that 45 minutes, but I wanted to cover uh, as many apps as I could. Uh, don't forget to follow my YouTube channel. So YouTube.com slash The Design Ninja, where there are weekly, most of the weeks anyway, <laughs> tips and tricks and different techniques, including my Shuriken skills series which you can use uh, to develop your skills incrementally so those videos all designed to be under five minutes okay so you can learn a new thing every week in all of your favorite creative cloud apps but other than that i think we're good to wrap and uh, we do indeed hope to see you again soon with another uh, webinar from benq other than that Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for joining us today.